You're just gonna come home one day and the job will be gone. And so will you. I feel like there's more going on here than meets the eye. I don't really think Pete knows what's in store for him. Sit down! Sit down, Pete! Sit down! I think Victoria was about ready to jump out of the chair and choke me and delay me out. Don't laugh! Quiet! Quiet! I can't see us living without Pete, but there's times where I just wanna kick him out the door. It is despicable, and if I saw you do it, I would have you arrested. Sit. My name is Kelly. I live here with my husband, Peter, my son, Sean, my son, Petey, and my daughter, Caitlin. Brooke started out chewing up the furniture, chewing up phone charges, video games. The bunk beds cost me about $800. You can see the damage. One more thing. I find chewed, something chewed, or I ever play something, it's gone. My dad threatens to get rid of Brooke all the time. You got to help us. Otherwise, the dog's going to be gone. What was the agreement that we made when we got this dog? Me and you were dogs. Okay, then that, don't worry about me. What about you? My father does not help out with the dogs. He would just sit there and yell at them. No! Get down! Ah, shit. Run. No! No! Back up! Back up! I just want the dog gone. And wait, Brooke? Well, she's a menace to society. She is. He eats everything. Toys. She eats everything I own. Cell phone charger. She ate my cell phone charger. Cell phones. Cell phones. Ate one of my phones. <laughs> Why do you think she's doing it? Um, not enough stimulation. No, whoa, wait a second. No. What did you do there? Whacked her. You whacked her? Do you do that a lot? Yes. All the time. Both These of them. These two. All right. When I saw Caitlin hitting Brooke, I was shocked because neither Kelly nor Pete did anything about it. Any dog can be provoked to react negatively if they are teased or if some sort of pain is inflicted upon them. Are there arguments in this house over the dogs? Huge arguments. He's selfish. Chaotic. Who's selfish? Peter's. Why, why do you say that? Because it's whatever he wants, that's the way it is, and he doesn't help, he doesn't, it's what he wants to do first, and he doesn't consider anybody else before that. I'm not home all the time. When I come home, I like the house clean. I have a high standard. OK. And screams a lot. You scream yeah, a lot? Yeah, I scream at them. Why do you scream? Is it because you, why do you scream? I just scream. Don't know why. One thing that you can put into your brain, store away, lock up, is that all the shouting, all the fighting, really affects the dog in a stressful way, both dogs. And you know one of the reasons why dogs chew is because they get sometimes upset. The way I feel about Brooke, it's really hard to explain. I really don't feel like I have time at all for the dogs. What do you want for the dogs? I want Princess to stop being so fearful of people. I want Brooke to be able to stay with us without consequences. And I want Princess and Brooke to be happy living with us. The reason why Princess doesn't come near you is because when she was first home with us, you beat her up. What did you do? When you say beat Princess up, what did you do? She came at me. She never came at you. She, no, no, she came at she me. She never came at you. What did you do to I her? I popped her in the nose, right in the snout. And then he since then she has He kicks the dogs. He punches dogs. He do. He's kicked oh, Brooke in the ribs. I am not a violent person, but if I saw Pete doing what I hear he does to his dogs, I would take him down. There is nothing worse, I tell you, than somebody that takes out all their frustration on vulnerable beings. You kick dogs, you do that kind of thing. I don't care whether you tapped her on the nose, you hit her on the bum, you kicked her in the ribs, whatever. It's abuse. It is absolute abuse, and you know, it is, it is despicable. And if I saw you do it, I would have you arrested. I would have you arrested for abuse. I would do that. I really wanted Pete to know that his behavior was not just affecting the dogs in a negative way, but affecting his family, especially his children. It's not a big leap now to think that Caitlin might have just learned that it was okay to hit the dogs by witnessing her father do it. One day, the dogs are gonna come. They're gonna remember it gonna bite your kids. That happened in the past, and uh, 
You know, that was when I was younger and stupid. Has he ever admitted it before? No. So do you see that as progress? Absolutely. I think the message is definitely starting to sink in with Pete, and I couldn't be happier. I really hope that this now is going to help, hopefully, to start you on a, on a new path. I think Pete has made some real progress, but I wanted to show him that the way he interacts with his dogs and his family are going to have a real influence on their behavior. So I wanted to try an experiment. Sit down. Go sit on. down, Pete. Sit down. Go on, go on. What did I tell you? Sit down. Sean, stand up. <laughs> stand up. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Don't She's laugh. She's being serious. Did I tell you to speak? <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. It reminds me of my dad. Does it? I don't think I need to hammer it home to Pete anymore about how his behavior is affecting his family and his dogs. If he doesn't get it by now after everything I've said to him, he's never going to get it. The way this family speaks to each other is in a heightened all the time. Get off, do this, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, I think, is, it stresses out your dogs. I think Pete not only needs to learn a bit of positive reinforcement with his dogs, but also with his children and with his wife. I want you to try and do with your dogs, instead of shouting at them, shouting them at, it's just, it's just almost fueling the fire. Okay. Because, you know, dogs are very good hearing. You don't need to shout at them, because they can hear really well. Here's what I want you to try do. Let's say, Brooke gets on the couch. I don't want you to say, off. I want you to say, off. Caitlin, off. <laughs> Good. Good. Excellent. OK. I've said it. Can you now instill the sort of the new rules about how you're going to discipline the dogs? Absolutely. I didn't see what was going on in my own home. With Victoria coming in, she opened my eyes to everything. I want to introduce you to Kathy and Carrie. Carrie Hi. is the therapy Hi. dog, Hi. the Good Dog Foundation. Um, and I also want to introduce you to Juliet, Hi. who is a social worker. She specializes in the human-animal bond. I wanted them to speak to you a little bit about what our own dogs can do for us in our homes. I'm hoping that I can show Peter how dogs can really be part of his family's healing process rather than the dogs being just a source of stress. We work with a lot of people to help people reduce their stress through the dogs, and it sounds like there's a lot of stress in your house. I and have a, if I you have can, immense amount of stress. yeah, if you can look at your dog as as someone that can help you with that, and it's amazing just sitting and petting a dog, how calming it is. Really, ever since I've been at your house, I've, I've never seen you maybe pet the dog once. Do you want to meet her? Do you want to meet she this one? She's very nice and pleasant. I don't think Pete's a bad man at all. I think he doesn't deal with stress very well. But I hope he's taking everything in, because ultimately, it's going to make his life a lot easier. Since the passing of our, our other dog, Patches, I didn't want another dog, because that was my best friend. I grew very attached to that dog. And the way she, when she passed, it just hurt me. Well, if we were walking in the neighborhood, she would be right next to my side the whole time. So we had a nice, we had a nice bond, and then for for a while, and then uh, we had to put it down. She wound up having lung cancer, and I cried like a baby. And I never cry. We sat with her for an hour after we they put it down. sat there for an hour for, put it down. My mother called me at the hospital and said, something's wrong with Patchy. What do you she, mean something's wrong with Patchy? I went to the hospital, she was fine. So she's having trouble walking up and down the stairs and she, she can't breathe. Couldn't breathe, and so we took her right so, to the bed. I said, what's wrong with her? And said, she's got about a 1,000 nodules in each lung of lung cancer. So our first reaction was, okay, where do we go from here? He says, well, you could do chemo. We were all ready to do it. I was ready to do it. Well, um, how long after we do the chemo? Maybe six months. I said, I can't do that to my son. I said, he already said his goodbyes. It's going to kill me. We sat with her for, I think, an hour before we let them put her down. And then an, an hour after, we put her down. And then we wound up having her uh, cremated. Cremated. She's in my china cabinet. She's in our china closet. And he still has her collar. Which Brooke ate. All right, Which but it's still there. It's in one piece, it's just a little shredded. So I does. think the only time I hit her, Patches used to sit there and sit on you all the time. She'd be right next to you, and that's exactly what Brooke does. 
So I see Patches in Brook, more in Brook than any other dog I've had after Patches. And I bonded with Brook just the same way I bonded with her. Please take away, if you're frustrated, take it out of the home. Please teach the kids not to hit out at the dogs or scream and shout at the dogs. They follow your example. And um, Sean, you also have to measure yourself too. That when you get frustrated, you get angry, you don't hit out either. Okay? All right. I learned how dogs' emotions are connected with yours and all the different types of things that dogs can do and how dogs can relieve your stress. So I learned a lot. I want to join you. Sean seems to be a lot happier. I think some of the things that she said to him and, and told him helped his confidence. Who's Tail that? wagon. All right, so now leave her alone. Uh, Let's see what she does. What I really need to work on is my connection with my kids. I want to make myself a better person, make myself a better father and a dog owner. Easy. Slow. Tell her easy. easy. Good girl. I'm definitely feeling less overwhelmed. I'm definitely finding a lot more peace. I'm definitely getting more help, which is exactly what I needed. My dogs are here, my kids are here, my husband is here. Everybody's here together, and that's what I wanted, because my dogs are a part of my family.